Go ahead, Pat. I just want to finish on what you said. So, uh, put, put those boards there and you put the mineral oil on. Yeah. And then after that is when you put the wax on? No, it's yeah. all mixed together. You mix, melt the wax into the mineral oil. So right. it's a paste wax. And then the yeah. mineral oil saturates the wood. The wax saturates the pores of the wood, making it more water resistant okay. and waterproof so than just mineral oil. So then this is a, yeah, yeah, but uh, the, the wax helps it last longer. So you never did mineral oil by itself with this, this wax on it? Yeah. It, no, that's, that's got mineral oil by itself and then the mineral this, oil wax on it. This board that Chris has done has got two coats of uh, mineral oil and then a coat of the beeswax mineral oil mix. Um, Mike, the, uh, Tim, you sent around with stuff really solid, but that's a combination of 3 to 1. Wax, well, I, I can't say for sure because I didn't measure <laughs> approximately. How would you apply that? Would you try to? You can use a rag, but uh, I usually just use my hand and, and just rub it on. Um, that board that I'm passing around, I did that by hand, except for the because it's got the live edge with the board on it, the, the bark on it. I used a toothbrush to to scrub it in and. Uh, Go ahead, Kevin. By the way, on that, that piece board you're talking about, so what is that? What, what kind oh, of that wood is uh, lace wood. Lace? Lace wood, no. Lace wood, or it's also known as silky oak. Okay. Yeah. And it's your joint piece together there. Like yeah, it was a, a slice of a log, and I, I took slices off it and <clears throat> book matched them, glued them, glued them together. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. There's another one I can pass around, too. So Mike, I made, uh, there it is. I think I'll make wall hangings out of them or something. <laughs> so I, I made this. Do I would I use a beeswax paste on this as well? Then? Sure. That yeah, would that be sufficient? It's food safe, yeah. I do that with my wife's wooden spoons and you do? spatulas and that. Yeah. Yeah. So you just made a spatula. And I just rub the excess off with a paper towel usually. Would you leave that to dry then or? It won't really dry like you know in five minutes yeah room temperature the wax is going to set as much as it's going to set. Okay so don't over over apply it basically. You can't over apply it. You can under apply it but you can't over apply it. How do you yeah. under apply it? Do you just wipe it off? Put it off or? Or? Yeah. You can not put it off on it or wipe it off too quick. Put too much and rub it off with a paper towel and use that paper towel on the next one. Do you buff it? Do you buff? The, those boards I'm passing around, I, I buff them up with a microfiber mm -hmm. fiber towel a little bit. Yeah. Oh, so you didn't use like a buffing wheel? No. no. Okay. Well, That's too much work. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Wayne. When you're, when you're cutting on that, and you, you know, you use it a lot, you cut a lot, you cut off the wax. You have to redo it after you've done it. Yeah, yeah, I, I know you do because uh, well, I got a cutting board that I, I sold to uh, a friend, and uh, after about a year, she says my cutting board's looking a little dry. What can I put on it? So I gave her some beeswax mineral oil to, to put on. So, the wax so it, on your food or, or? it doesn't matter. It's I think it's very safe. safe. Yeah, it's beeswax yeah. is. Is edible. It, it's on a, an, an incredible amount of stuff that you don't know. Like it's a coating on, on pills. And what do you want to see me for? Yeah, go ahead, uh, Roy. Would it be dangerous to heat up your beeswax with the heat gun? Yeah, <laughs> depending on how hot you get it. Yeah, you could. So we actually have a video that shows how to actually do it, because I was curious myself. I, I don't know how to do this, so it was kind of interesting. You want to show the video, Mike, or do you want to... Okay, just, uh, yeah, let's show the video. Yeah, let's just do the quick three-minute one, guys, and, uh, and then kind of come back to it, because that's a good segue. Sure, everybody's getting tired of looking at me.
cut it down into chunks that small. Bigger chunks will still melt. This, this seems to be the safest way to do it. This or a double boiler? Or a double, or a double boiler. boiler, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. If you have the element right, or if you have the pot with the wax in it right on the element, without a double boiler or the crock pot, it's potential to overheat and then light up on fire, especially if you walk away for a second. Or slightly burn. Or it'll burn, yeah. Or I found another method. My wife's stove has a, it's not really an element, it's called a warming zone on it. And I tried that out. And it'll take like an hour to melt the wax. So you know it's it's got to be safe because you never get it hot enough to uh, catch fire. So Mike, is it best to put it in a little metal container? Or could you go to the dollar store and grab a couple of those little zip or Ziploc type containers of plastic? What's that? I put it in the plastic. I shred my wax with a shredder. With a grater, yeah. And then then I put it in a mason jar, then put it in water. Okay. And I find it melts very quickly, and the mason jar keeps it well. You put a lid on it after with the with the mineral oil. Well, that's a great idea. And then I get those little plastic cups at the dollar store. Yeah. Pour it in that, and I give it away when I. Or give it a is it not too warm when you put in those plastic, like yeah. the heat? So you gotta no. worry about that, or no? It no. starts to oh, okay. it so starts it to coagulate pretty fast. Okay, you're not dealing with <laughs> it's not boiling. You're not dealing with a yeah. You can also order two different containers. All right, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Wait, go ahead. Camera back to I do two, two different ones. I do a, a one that is uh, like a two to one and a three to one. And the two to one I use as a second one. It's a much thicker wax, and, and then I can really put that in. Okay. So your your preference then is on when you when you're doing a board, you use the two to one first. Is three that to one first. or three yeah, to one first? Two to one and then three to one. Two to one then three to one. And then three to one then two. I went to his house last year. I was I got him online, and he that wax he uh, uh, made is really really good wax. It's, uh, I don't know if you remember the lecture, but. It's a one-time only used by the the tribes, and uh, they put it through a special process to. Uh, is that this guy? This yeah, it's a pump. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And uh, they put it through a special process to make sure it could clean them all and impurities and that. Yeah. That's really good. You don't need much. Like I mean, I had a swag. I had a, I gave gave away some of that. It lasts forever. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank so, you. We appreciate it. Okay. That's, that's what I use. That's my dedicated wax melting pot. I'm so yeah. Maybe two bucks or something. Yeah. yeah. There's different ways to do it, but I think the safest way, though, is either the double boiler or a yeah. crock pot where it's separate and the flame. There's no flame. Perfect. Something on the plane? Something on the crock pot. Yeah. 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 And you can get a crock pot yeah. wherever. Yeah, we already have. Okay. Because I use it when I when I apply the the mineral wax, I'll, I'll rub the mineral wax uh, on the the wax and and uh, beeswax mixture with mineral oil, and I tend to leave it for a little while, maybe a half an hour or so, and then come back and buff it, and that will really that that's where you, you can't just wipe it on and say oh, there you go I've got a wax because you'll get clumps and bumps and everything else because it is a paste wax right it, it's essentially 
So you, you, you apply it everywhere, liberally, get it on with a paper towel. It's not gobs of it, but it's just a nice thin layer. And then let it sit for a little while so it can be absorbed into the wood. And then go back at it with a dry paper towel, but you rub it. And, and you like that process because as you rub it, it gets warm and you can smell the, the honey off of it. So it's really, you know you're doing a good job when you start to get that smell, but you've got to rub it. You can't just sit there and, and wipe it because it'll still be tacky. You have to, you have to rub it in. Otherwise, it, it won't get the same finish that you got. So that wood that's circulating around the, on the second pass of that, that's, that's the finish you'll get when you rub it in as opposed to a stickiness. <coughs> Part, part of that depends on your wood preparation too, how fine you sand in your wood. And I know most guys that do boards will sand to at least 220. Yeah. Is that used only on unfinished wood or can it be used on a smooth wood? Or? I wouldn't even bother using it on a... Just to get the same well, feel. Yeah, you, you could use it on uh, just stained wood, as, on like a piece of furniture without a... With a polyurethane finish, yeah, that's years ago. That was uh, before they invented, you know, shellac and lacquer. Right. So you know, we'll that. That's true. You, you'd have a heck of a time getting the wax off. You'd have to use mineral spirits and several times to to get it off. But it, it does make a nice a nice finish <coughs> for something that that doesn't get a lot of wear. It's, Go ahead, Dave. But this, the combination we're not talking about isn't really for furniture. It's, it's no. for food grade yeah. food projects. Yeah. Yep. So either a bowl or a cutting board yeah. or anything like that. I use it on my spurtles, the, the porridge sticks. I'll use the, the yeah. metal wax on that. Yeah. And spurtles. Uh, like a, that's a, and ahead, spoons and sorts. Yeah. I had some years ago when I used to make furniture. I had some Sheffield, like the people who make the Sheffield bronze. They had a beeswax out then. I contacted them about 10 years ago. It would be, judging from the way you mix the two and three, it would be about a four to one mix. Yeah. And it was for furniture, like for yeah. your finishing wood. But you need to do it thinner. Yeah. Because, yeah. like, I still got a bit of it left, and, and you can gouge your finger and put a little bit yeah. on you. Which you I've do. even seen on YouTube where you, uh, they recommend beeswax for your, your cast iron skillets to season them. Keep them up and rub the beeswax on. Can I can I just tell you one the, the rolling pins I was making a couple of years ago? I experimented around. I tried mineral oil on straight on them, and it just didn't absorb on the maple. So I used to use grapeseed oil. You get it at an Italian uh, deli, yeah. and it will take high heat. And I used to just slab, slabber it on, and then turn the lathe up really high and burn it in, and then I would just take a bar of standard beeswax without any cut to it and just run that on it with the lathe down to about slow, and then when I sell them, I take some straight beeswax and I put it into little forms and I give everyone one of them and one oh, yeah. of So, like, it depends what you're doing. Don't with. you worry about grapeseed oil possibly going rancid? No, I've heard that no, it's great. Oil. It's, I tried all sorts of different food grade oils. <coughs> Grapeseed oil is great. And yeah. I got... I know it takes a high heat. Seeing as I had it, had it in the house, I started using it for cooking, so yeah. it's not that expensive. Like, you hardly use any for a rolling pin. I've even... Uh, uh, years, was it four years ago, when my granddaughter was still in diapers, her, my daughter's cousin came up with a, a recipe for diaper cream. It was uh, pretty much the same thing. It was beeswax and mineral oil, and there was some like calendula flowers that you soaked it in or something. And it was, of course, it was a thinner mixture too. But I'll tell you, my my daughter went away for one weekend and forgot her uh, mixture, and so she just bought a commercial mixture, used it on the baby, and uh, she said. The rash got worse. Got home, put the beeswax mineral oil mixture on, carry it right up. Oh, it, it's good stuff. Yeah, go ahead, uh, Wayne. Uh, Lee Valley has a, a really good uh, wax. That was put me on to it. It's, uh, conservatory wax? Yeah, thing. Renaissance wax. Pardon? Ren it's Renaissance wax or conservative wax. Yeah. I think it's good. Yeah. I use it on the bowls. I don't, I don't use it on uh, the boards, but on the bowls. Yeah, yeah. And 
After 30 months, 30 uh, days, that's food safe too, so we could use that. But it, it doesn't smell as nice as beeswax. <laughs> so, uh, as for containers, I have a friend who does a lot of target shooting with a pellet rifle. So I've got a bag full of these. And I've saved a few for myself if anybody wants them. They're available after the meeting. I rec highly recommend washing them out first because they did have pellets in them, which are lead. Yeah. You wash it out, it'll be fine. So, some of them are a nice little size, too. I like a shoe polish size, I guess. Well, so they didn't use them for the they didn't use them for No. No, I don't know why he didn't. He made cardboard targets. <laughs> We've got a safe to store plastic, uh, plastic Yeah. Yes, yeah, perfectly safe. Yeah. 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 Uh, any other questions? All right. Excellent. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. Good discussion.